Hey guys, this is a tutorial on how to paint Lord of Schools. Uh, as you can see, I have already primed it in black and started dry brushing it. Um, what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna take some brush, I bought it in some paint store, just a normal brush, not from edge painting. Uh, I'm gonna take Warplock Bronze from Citadel and I'm gonna start dry brushing. You just dip a, your brush into a paint. Make sure it's dry. Just remove the excess of a paint from the brush. You can test on the paper if it's all right. You should get such an effect like this. And just start dry brushing. You don't have to be careful at all at this stage. We need to cover the whole area with this paint. Just leave the dark recesses black. But except that, we just want to go through everything, even schools that will be painted with another paint later. So just don't worry about anything. Dry brush the whole thing. I've got some questions about uh, dry brushing, how to achieve this smooth effect without the uh, like noticeable I don't know, strokes or chunks of paint leave left on the miniature. Uh, you just have to make sure that uh, the brush is more or less clean. Um, you can't have uh, like uh, the hair on the brush glued because it will just leave marks on the miniature. You should mm, clean it, maybe not a lot, but sometimes. After I'll finish dry brushing the whole thing with the Warplock Bronze, I'm gonna clean it with a hot soapy water and then dry it and start dry brushing with uh, gold. Um, yeah, I think that's it. So, just show again. Dip in the paint, remove the excess, should look like that. And start dry brushing. Oh yeah, if you have like, mm, I don't know, something like that, when you want the shadows to remain like here in these recesses, you should and also, if the mm, details are um, vertical, not horizontal, you should always dry brush horizontally. So I'm just gonna show you a little bit more and then finish the whole miniature on the side. And go through another step. Actually, I need a little bit more paint. And yeah, just paint the whole miniature like that. As you can see, I dry brushed the whole miniature. Uh, so I cleaned the brush for another step. I'm gonna do dry brushing again. Just you have to always shake your paint, especially for metallics before painting. Just take a bit of paint, you can uh, 
and start dry brushing again. Again, this whole miniature will be dry brushed, uh, except now you use a little less force and just try to not cover all of the details and all of the surfaces. Basically with each another uh, dry brushing step you want to cover smaller and smaller areas, only the highlights. And it's simple as that, you just dry brush everything, this time a little bit more carefully, like that. It's really hard to paint such a big miniature on the camera because it covers like 80% of the screen. I can't really take my camera any further because I'm just right behind it so it would block my vision and also I wouldn't reach it. So. We will just have to deal with it. And that's pretty much it. You just, when you run out of paint, just dip it again in the paint. Make sure you spread the paint over the brush. If you want to maintain your brushes, you just have to make sure always that the paint goes only up to a half of a brush because when it starts to accumulate here the brush will uh, become more and more damaged and faster than usually. I mean dry brushing is pretty invasive for a brush anyway so if you don't want to buy a new brush like every few days or every few miniatures you have to take a good care of it as I said wash it a lot with uh, hot and soapy water um, between stages um, don't dip the whole brush into paint just make sure the the other half is clean and yeah when you dry brush uh, what I do is um, for example I make a stroke and when the brush will become flat, like not like that, I just um, rotate it a little bit. So when I dry brush, I go like that. And after a couple of strokes, I rotate it and do again like that. So uh, when you rotate it, it's just you make it sharp. You make it stay sharp longer. And I think that's it. I'll just finish dry brushing whole miniature uh, with gold and show you the next step. I'm starting um, for a layer with runefang steel, same brush, same procedure pretty much. Remove the excess of paint from the brush and start dry brushing. With this step we want to do mostly the edges. Uh, you have to apply much less pressure than previous steps to cover small areas. So we don't cover the whole work we did in the previous steps. like this. And pretty much go all over everything again.
as you can see I'm only slightly touching the miniature just to highlight all the edges and leave the gold and brass underneath unpainted and as always as I mentioned earlier uh, if you have edge like that don't dry brushes like that just go against it you see I did a mistake here if you go like that you can see that um, oh yeah you can see here that uh, both edges are highlighted and the middle isn't and for example here it's pretty much the same the bottom but I did it wrong on the top and it's just everything is highlighted here we always have to go like this not with the detail just against it And yeah, you pretty much have to go through all the miniature like that. So I'll show you later at next step. There you go. It looks like that after the first step. I'm gonna start washing it now um, with Tamiya smoke. Uh, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna dilute it a little bit with water because it is a little bit too thick I think it's a little bit too thin, but we'll see how it goes. It's always better to make it too thin and then repeat this step rather than just take it straight from the cup and um, it's this paint is kind of like a varnish uh, it gives a shine to the miniature and also a little bit protects uh, coats below but uh, it's kind of like it's basically like the varnish if you already cover some area and then return to it with uh, the brush before it dries it gets a little bit sticky and it can remove some of the paint from underneath so it's always best to a little bit dilute it and maybe do the two coats instead of one thick one I've just started painting with it so I'm not that familiar with this paint but this is what I 
observed on the last few miniatures. As you can see, it looks much nicer now. The gold is shining from beneath again. The same with the um, warp lock bronze. Um, you can compare both tracks here and here, and it just looks a lot of nicer. And it's a very quick step to to wash it with smoke. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna cover most of the parts with the smoke uh, except uh, some parts like I don't know, arms, the blood tanks, um, this heat vents and some other parts um, just to um, cover them later with seraphine sepia wash um, make them look a little bit different than the rest so it won't be um, like all the miniature the same yeah, this is how me actually look like after applying uh, smoke. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is take my airbrush and apply first layer of Citadel corn red for all the heating effects. Uh, this is a kind of airbrush I use now. Uh, I just broke my third airbrush and this one I bought from my friend. Uh, I have to wait a few more days until the new one arrives. So I don't really like it, but I don't have anything else at the moment. So yeah, I'm just gonna take my reservoir. Um, pour some water in. And a paint. Uh, I have no idea, to be honest, how much is it paint, how much is it uh, water, it just it shouldn't be too thick, uh, it shouldn't make like a spider effects, uh, as long as it doesn't make spider effects it's alright, and if it's not too thick, so I add like, I think more than 50% of water, and um, yeah, it's just fine, as you can see. Actually, the more water you use or thinner, the less you have to clean your airbrush. But it can't be too thin because when you will uh, work close to the miniature, it can uh, make like the spider effects if it's going to be too wet or too diluted. So yeah, basically start with applying It's really hard to paint with a camera in front of me because it just blocks my airbrush and my vision, but I guess I will just have to use this. Something like that. I usually make a mistake of covering too big parts. For example, here it went too far from the vent, but I'll repair it later with washes, so I don't have to worry about it that much. Yeah, 
yeah, this is basically what you have to do on the whole miniature. I'll cover now the rest of parts, uh, the heat vents on the back, all the vents on the sides and uh, yeah I think that will be it. Finished applying the first coat of red, now I'm gonna do Evil Sun's Scarlet from Seville as well. Uh, I already put in my reservoir, looks like it. like that. It's a bright uh, red color. And yeah, I'm gonna start painting. Make sure that you cover a smaller area. Then earlier. You can see that I'm not constantly applying paint, just um, first push the um, trigger for air and then let a little bit of paint out, let it dry and repeat it. So I'm not just gonna, uh, don't just pull it and paint all over, I do like little dots all the time. It's basically safer because if the paint is too wet, then uh, the air dries it after the application. So it's just better and safer way to paint. Yeah, and just again. Go over all the bit. Change it before and cover them with a brighter red. Simple as that. Yeah, I'm gonna change the step on the side and move to the other one. Time for another highlight. I'm using this time uh, 12 slayer orange. And yeah, I just have to go like that.
And again, I'm gonna finish on the side and move to the next step. Next step, um, flash gets yellow. Same drill. As you could see, the water is uh, the paint is a bit diluted and it made a stain. But fix this later. Something like that. I'm gonna finish this on the side and move to the next step later. This is going to be the last airbrush step for heat effects. I use just a white paint. Yeah, something like that. Airbrushing is finished and what I'm gonna now is use a Cassandra yellow wash and I'm gonna just wash all the red parts with, with this wash and it's pretty much it.
just like that, not too much at once. Yeah, just like that. What I'm gonna also do is paint the armor with the same wash. It gives it a nice golden shine. Just don't want to cover everything, just some parts, so... If you do make a mistake, make sure you have a, either a wet brush or a wet Q-tip to just quickly wipe it off. And you have to go through over the miniature like that. Mm, not all over, I mean all the heat parts. And do them just like that. Yep. Now I'm using uh, Kyaborg Crimson from Citadel as well. Uh, I'm going to go over the um, heat elements but also other armor elements what I like to do is um, use a wet q-tip and just clean it a little bit around so it doesn't cover the whole thing just the bits around it like that I'll have to wait until it dries and do this process again and again, just covering small and smaller areas. Like that, you can see the color building up all on the spot, and I'm gonna keep doing it for a couple more times, and then later take uh, Duchi Violet and do the same thing again. 
So yeah. Uh, I'm gonna do it for these arm pads, the armor, um, here, here, uh, all over this part, uh, a little bit here and here, blood tanks as well. So pretty much most of the miniature. Uh, yeah. Next step application of. Uh, Dirty violet, I think. Just go like that. times should be enough yeah you should get such an effect on a yarmor smaller brush for this step. And keep working like that. As you can see, I did here this bottom armors as well in the red. And again, I'm gonna use the ultraviolet and just create some further depth. Just like that. Yeah. And as well, I did the blood tanks. Um, I forgot about the X, I'm gonna do it in a minute. And these parts. And here the same. Finished washing the whole miniature. Now I'm going to go and do the schools. Uh, I'm gonna start with dry bashing with Camry Brown. Yeah, something like that. And I will just go all over the miniature and do the head as well. Same thing all the time. Just avoid the metallic parts. Yep, do it like that. I dry brush schools again with um, screaming school and they look like that and I'm 
gonna now dry brush face with screaming school. Something like that. I'm going to do his face now with Carbo Crimson. First layer go over the face, just cover everything, and then we'll go to the shadows. Just make sure you push the wash into the recesses. Start from highlights and just go to shadows. Going to do this part with red wash as well. Yeah, and just work the shadows like that. I overdone a little bit uh, the red wash so I had to dry brush it again and do the shadows with wash again. Um, I'm gonna now use Turchi Violet and I'm just gonna do the deepest shadows with it.
like that. And I think that will be enough. Next step, airbrushing Sotec Green, one of my favorites. Um, same thing with, uh, as with the red. You don't want to cover too much. Basically, I just finished this part and uh, gargoyle eyes as well. Just gonna do all of those. Um, this part. Um, this part on the X and this part, and I think that's it. Finished our brushing with Sotec Green. And I'm gonna use now white, just pure white. It's a bit mixed with the blue because the, some of it was left in an airbrush, but it's almost pure white. Um, to be honest, I have no idea how to do ruins. I usually, I usually just highlight some bits more than the other, and that's my recipe for now. As you can see, I basically highlight the edges and the middle to create some shining effect. Yeah, something like that. Thank you.
Yeah, just like that. I will wash runes now with Gwilym and Blue. You can either do it carefully or do it like me, just cover everything and then clean the parts that are supposed to stay brighter like that. Just take a wet paint, uh, wet brush and brush away uh, the wash. Same thing here. Just go all over it and then Clean it a little bit. Just like that. And just do this for all the blue parts. Now I will use Waywatcher Green. Uh, you can see that I already did eyes here and here with it. So you can compare how does it look after and before applying it. Um, same thing as before. I'm just gonna apply it everywhere and then wipe it a little bit from the white parts. Yeah, it should look like that. Done.
final step uh, I will make a highlight with a brush and a white Same with prunes. Sorry. Just work mostly on the edges. And it should be fine. Now we are going to need some old and damaged brush. Like this one. Um, you can use a normal brush for this step, but this way it's, it's going to be quicker and more random. Just dip it in a silver and make a mark like that. Yeah. Do this for our blood tanks and we'll move to the blood. Now I'm going to paint on blood. Um, I use a hobby color clear red, however it is a little too bright for me uh, straight from the cup. So what I do, I put a little bit it to another cup and just right on the bottom and leave it for a day and after a day it's much more thicker and darker and I prefer it that way so same brush as the before just old and damaged brush and start painting on blood
should be enough. Um, same for blue tanks. Just for this step, just cover the whole thing in blood. As you can see, this paint is transparent and the uh, silver we put on in the last step, you can see it through the blood, it creates a nice pattern. It's not like flat, you can see that there's something in the tank. Yeah, and just to the old tanks, front, um, here, teeth. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and the eggs, of course. I'm also going to add blood, uh, a little bit on tracks, spikes, um, chest, just all over the miniature, just don't overdo it. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna show you how it looks after I finish. That's it, this is how finished miniature look like. Uh, it was my first tutorial, I'm sorry it was so phlegmatic, but I haven't spoken English for a couple of months now. Uh, next one will be definitely better. Uh, I encourage you to leave comments or any criticism so I could improve in future. I'll be posting tutorials on most uh, releases, most new releases from Games Workshop for at least one miniature to show you how I paint it. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed it and have fun.